In this video, we're going to take a look at JUnit Flux. JUnit Flux allows us to automatically run unit tests when we save any change to a Java program. This is the third part of a three-part series and the tools that we can use to help us unit test. We know that unit testing is a good idea, but a lot of times we look back and realize we haven't written a single unit test in six months. And so how can we get around that? How can we make sure that we are unit testing? Well, the first fear that we have is that we have too many dependencies on other classes, and we know that Mockito can be used to mock objects so we don't have those dependencies. Then we need to know what is tested and what is not, and Echol Emma will give us information on unit testing coverage. Those are tools that we've seen earlier. JUnit Flux is one that makes running tests compulsory, and that's nice because then we don't even think about it. When I first started teaching, uh, you had to remember to compile your program. It didn't automatically compile with every save. And so a lot of times students would come to me with a program that was not even close to running. It was, uh, it was a, a lot of syntax errors. And they simply had not compiled it. They just kept working on it without compiling. As soon as compiling became compulsory, we got the little red lines, which would tell us something's wrong. And that's a similar thing that we want with JUnit Flux is it's compulsory. So it's going to tell us immediately when we have a unit testing failure. So I'm going to say JUnit test, I'm sorry, JUnit flux update eclipse. And we're going to find the JUnit flux update URL. Okay. And just a moment then. So I'm going to grab this update site, control C. And we're going to go to Eclipse and we're going to go help and then install new software. And then I'm going to paste that URL on this update site and choose add. And we're going to call it JUnit Flux. And OK. OK. And we get the JUnit Flux option. We'll just expand, make sure it's what we want. Uh, choose next. I looked for this on the Eclipse Marketplace and did not see it. Uh, honestly, didn't see much about JUnit Flux that's been updated in the last few years. So I'm afraid that it might be a project that's been mothballed. But nonetheless, the last version I worked with was very functional and did a very simple job, but did it very well. So we're going to go ahead and say next. Uh, of course, we'll read the entire license agreement in great depth and then choose I accept. Uh, and then we're going to choose finish. I'll, let the, I'll pause while this installs. Choose OK. Restart Eclipse when prompted. Now with Eclipse started, I can right click on my project and I can say add remove JUnit Flux Nature. And now with JUnit Flux Nature added, we're ready to go. One small change I need to make. JUnit Flux is going to automatically run any class that, that either begins or ends with the word test, capital T. And it's going to run that when any class in the same package changes. So it's package by package. Right now we have our test class in a different package than the class that it is testing. We need to move these together. In Eclipse, it's very easy. I simply take the test class and I drag it and I drop it into the desired package. It's going to make some prompts here for me. I'm going to say, OK, it's going to automatically refactor the class to put the correct package name in. And now let's take a look. This is our test class here. And you see already it's run the test because it noticed something has changed. So it's run test search plants no redbud, uh, test search plants null, and test search plants execute. Uh, by the way, if, if you're watching this video out of order, uh, I created those tests in a previous video. Let's go to search plants now. And first of all, I'm just going to add a dummy int i equals 1. Terminate with a semicolon. When I choose save, watch and the test will rerun. And you see automatically the tests rerun. Now let's break a test. Instead of saying return search, let's say return success. Because two of our tests are based on, actually, sorry, one of our tests is based on uh, if we send a red bud in, it's going to return search. So let me change that to success, and this should break one of our tests. I save, it runs. And sure enough, test search plants execute fails. We look at then verify results, and it's verifying that what is returned from the search plants execute method is equal to the word search. We've changed that, and you see now automatically 
JUnit Flux has run our unit tests and it's caught us with a regression error. So a regression error is when we change something and it affects something else we don't know about. In this case, the regression error is our navigation. Our navigation, which we've defined in uh, our uh, faces config, and again, we defined that previously as well, uh, but our navigation that we've defined in faces config will no longer work because it is expecting uh, search, not success. And there we go, the word search. So that's why we want to write good unit tests that are validating our assumptions and that are ensuring a quality program. Let's go ahead and change this back from success to search. And again, all I need to do is save with the control S and we see now all three tests pass. So JUnit Flux is one of the three tools, one of the three plugins we use with Eclipse that helps us to write effective unit tests. I hope this, helpful, this video has been helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.